So, we know that the cos of RHP 0 is uh, this was the node B inside the op amp and this was the node C this is the output node and we have this compensation cap CC and this is the current. So, we uh, CC around inverting stage. And um, I, I taught you, uh, you know, how do you quickly figure out the value of that uh, 0. So, when the 0 is happening, this node C is at 0, right, because that is the definition of 0 frequency. And at certain frequency, which will be omega 0, that uh, node C will be 0. So, then the current flowing here will be equal to the current flowing up here, right, under that condition. So, what is the current flowing through CC? That will be um, on. Uh, Correct, yeah. Um, so, omega z, uh, cc and vb, that will be the current flowing through that uh, uh, in the bc uh, path and then on the other side you have the current flowing through this pmos uh, m6, that would be gm6 and vb, correct. So, so we basically say, okay, vb, vb go away and then we get omega z equal to gm6 divided by uh, cc. So, that is the location of the 0 and this is in this is positive. So, it is a write off length uh, write off length 0, okay. Now, one thing to note is um, why is this 0 happening? Because there is a feed forward path if you understand it because in this case we are saying that the current is flowing this way and then it flows this way, okay. So, if I if I make sure that this feed forward path does not happen, then I can get rid of this 0. Right, because that's what that's what we did. So well, there is a one simple trick that you could use. One is uh, to remove the feed forward path, but keep the functionality the same. Okay, so uh, let me show you how to do that. This is our op amp. and then this was our. Uh, second stage current source and then um, this was the capacitor C A. okay. So, we want to add a CC, but then we do not want the feed forward path. So, what we can do is we can take this node which is the V out node hmm, and we can buffer it by using a source follower C C over here. Okay. So, this source follower, what it is doing is it just takes this V0 and then it, it buffers it and puts it out here. Okay. So, functionally everything is still the same, all our equations are valid. But what I have done now is I have, um, I have removed the feed forward path because this current cannot go forward this way because this is being driven, this, this node is being driven by this output node. Okay. So, the, the current cannot flow from here back over here other than the parasitic capacitive division which is at very high frequency, okay. So, this is a um, source follower and you will see many papers uh, which talk about this. Um, so, PD and PND remain same as before. Okay, uh, what are the um, what are the disadvantage of this that you can see? Anybody point out? Additional current, yeah, basically additional power. And what else? We are adding one more thing in the circuit, right? So you have to worry about its frequency response. That's just one more thing you have to deal with. So you have to um, um, uh, source follow frequency response. You have to worry about. Okay, you have to make sure that this doesn't deteriorate uh, PM. It shouldn't happen that the PM goes down. Okay, phase margin. Okay, all right. So let's. Uh, so that's one trick that somebody started off with. Then, uh, then people started working on it further. You know, because um, uh, they want to come up with a different way to do it. And here is a new another idea. How do you? Um,
So let's draw this again. Vv. And then instead of a, a, a capacitor, I'm going to put a resistor in series here. Okay. So let's call this my initials Rz. And then this is a CC compensation capacitor. And this is our M6. Okay. And this is your CL. So now let's figure out what is the value of the location of the zero. under this condition. Again the same trick that we are going to use, this is our V0 and to figure out the zero location we are going to put this node V0 to zero okay, and figure out the current flowing this way and ma match it with the current flowing this way, current all current going because no current is going to the output anymore okay? and that is why uh, that, that, that V0 is zero. So the current, what is the current flowing through again uh, somebody can tell me uh, Vb divided by Rz plus 1 over omega, um, omega z cc okay and that is equal to vb multiplied by gm6 is that part clear everyone huh? so all i'm doing is r plus uh, 1 over um, um, omega z cc that is your um, uh, look, location of the uh, sorry that that is the impedance total impedance Rz plus Cc okay right here and again we do the same thing and let us let us figure this out uh, slowly so that uh, what does what does this tell you this means okay Gm6 multiplied by Rz plus 1 over omega Z Cc is equal to 1. That's the equation. So then we can say um, GM6 divided by omega z cc um, is equal to uh, 1 minus GM6 rz. So far, everybody with me? So what does this tell you? This tells you that omega z is equal to. Um, Gm6 over Cc, all right, divided by 1 minus Gm6 Rz. Okay. So earlier we had just this zero on Gm6 divided by Cc, and now what do we have? We have a denominator uh, which is Gm6 Rz. This comes into play. So whenever you have 1 minus uh, Gm6 Rz, we get excited, right? Because now we can do some cancellation and some tricks, right? Okay. So all right. Uh, so when uh, gm6 rz is equal to 1 what will happen so this means rz equal to 1 over gm6 what will happen under that condition omega z becomes huh infinity right unbelievable right just by adding a resistor we got rid of the uh, so this becomes, uh, if I do this, then uh, 0 moves to infinity, right? And then um, we should be all happy, right? But then you, you get greedy, right? If I can make it to infinity, can I bring it back as a helping 0, which is, what is a helping 0? Left half plane. So I want to push it back in the uh, left half plane and then what else do you want to do not just bring it in the left half plane but what do you want to do you want to put it on our non dominant pole so you can have a cake and cream and everything right that's the thing so uh, so when we do that then um, uh, if i if i make uh, gm rz greater than 1 then uh, we have omega z that will be um, become negative and that means it's a left half plane zero. And let's cancel out. Non-dominant pole. Okay. So, um, what is the location of the non-dominant pole from our previous analysis? If you remember, uh, non-dominant pole location was GM. Um, uh, 
gm6 divided by cl uh, right that was uh, the non dominant mode and another way to look at that is the following at high frequency what happens is after you do the compensation properly this at high frequency okay um, this particular capacitor looks like a short okay and then what happens suddenly this m6 looks like a diode right and if it looks like a diode what is its impedance gm6 1 over gm6 right and then gm6 and cl so that's our non dominant pole just to you know get a feel for uh, you know how these things are playing out so in this particular case um, we want to uh, we want to make sure that omega z is equal to gm6 over cc divided by 1 minus gm6 rz is equal to minus gm6 over cl why is this minus sign because it's in the left half plane port right okay so uh, so this is our lhp port that's why we put the negative sign so let's grind through this math uh, what you will see is uh, cl over cc is equal to uh, gm6 goes away right and then uh, this becomes equal to gm6 rz minus 1 okay and what we are trying to actually figure out is how do i figure out the design value of rz okay so rz is equal to 1 over um, gm6 multiplied by 1 plus cl over cc okay so i thought this was really cool idea when i learned this for the first time in my opinion that you you really twist things around just by putting a resistor right unfortunately people were not too happy with it yet why is the reason what is the reason because this resistor is actually a physical resistor you're going to put and what's on this side right side you have a ratio of capacitors which is constant it doesn't move with process because uh, cl over cc will be ratio of capacitor and it it it, it will be 0.1% matching type of so it's it's virtually constant you know anywhere you go because of the matching now unfortunately gm6 that is going to change because the transistor parameters are going to change right uh, mu n c ox all those are going to change so now on the on the left side we have a resistor which is a physical resistor which comes because of just painting uh, a resistive line and on the right side we have a transistor gm6 so if you design this circuit and um, and you will see that you will get a cancellation right you uh, beautiful everything will but if you actually fabricate it um, it will go all over the place right so you your pole and zero will never uh, cross out each other and actually it will hurt your response more than hell because if they are close to each other then you get uh, you get something like a pole zero doublet type of response right so things don't settle out that quickly okay so even a cooler idea than this one okay let me show you that so what do you, what we want to do we want to take this uh, resistor on the left hand side and we want to make it tracking to gm6 okay we know that this part is already constant so i don't have to deal with that okay all i want to do is i want to make sure i want to implement a resistor in such a way that it tracks 1 over gm6 okay so there is a patent on that and uh, bill black uh, dave allstott uh, they have uh, the story goes that um, uh, this is these are all early um, 80s um, we had um, all our phone conversations were analog okay we didn't have digital i mean you probably have never seen that kind of phone right the analog phones where you you know dial the numbers like that you only find them in chor bazar by the way i'm still looking for one if you guys have one for sale i'll take it from you uh, anyway so um, so th so all these conversations were all analog okay so there is a microphone which is just uh, taking uh, you know sound waves into electrical waves and all this stuff is getting amplified and it's being transmitted analog way through the line so all these things unfortunately um, you know if you use your rc filters they will not the filters will not match and if you don't the filters don't match then uh, you will have uh, you know crossing from one line to another line right bandwidth so then the cool idea which we are going to learn uh, i keep using the word cool i'll not use the cool anymore um, that's not a cool thing to do so okay so um, so the um, so this um, as i said rc don't track when you create these bandwidths right so 
uh, the idea that uh, kind of emerged when I was about the time when I was born I think uh, was uh, you use ratios of capacitor and you use uh, uh, you know resistor switch resistor as a, um, a switch capacitor as a resistor to create the RC time constant okay. So then um, switch capacitor circuits basically we are going to learn that in a later later part of the class which I think is really important to learn switch capacitors because a lot of sample data circuits are based on that. Now there what you do is um, you are doing um, you, know, you know switch capacitor circuits which uh, which track everything tracks very well but the op amps were not tracking at that time right because op amps were designed using these RC compensation and they were moving around. So the idea at that time they came up with which I am going to show you right now was um, I think in the first lecture or second lecture when we were we were talking about we, we talked briefly about this and um, you can you can take a MOSFET and you put it in triode region or non saturation region okay and then what let us let us do that so that you can see uh, what the resistance looks like. What is the current in uh, non saturation region is going to be uh, VSG minus VTP, VSD. I'm just using intentionally PMOS right now because that's what I plan to use. VSD square, right? And mu P, C ox W by L. Okay. So this is um, equation for non-saturation region. So then, then we can do DI by D uh, VSD. Okay. So you have a PMOS transistor let us say and I am just trying to find out the resistance of this PMOS transistor right. So when you do that what do you get? You get uh, um, mu P C ox W by L of that PMOS transistor and then uh, multiply that by VSG minus VTP minus VSD okay all right. And now let us compute this value at VSD equal to 0, okay. What does that come out to be? That comes out to be mu P C ox W by L VSG minus VTP, right. That is what you get because VSD is 0. And what does that look like? That looks like our GM, right. So we can, uh, we can technically use um, a non saturated uh, MOSFET as a resistor over here and let us figure out how do you once you use it then how do we start doing this tracking thing right. So, so, so far you are with me right I am using a non saturated MOSFET to create GM like uh, behavior okay. So what we want uh, the circuit looks like this I am just going to draw the piece for compensation which is our final uh, device which was M6 okay and then uh, what I am going to do is I am going to draw this PMOS okay and then I am going to draw this capacitor. This is our CC and then MZ right. So uh, and this is the CL part and this is the current source. I am just showing you the, the small segment of the, the op amp. Instead of resistor, I am using this uh, M, M, MZ, MZ PMOS device. And then what we can say that, okay, then this guy RZ is equal to 1 over DI by uh, DVST at VSD uh, equal to 0 because here you can see there is no DC current flowing through this device, right, because I have a capacitor. So VSD is 0, DC wise it is 0 and that is equal to 1 over mu P C ox W by the L of uh, the Z transistor and VSG minus VTP of the Z device, okay. So as I said, uh, you know, this looks like a GM form. So now we need to basically figure out how do you how do you create this voltage VSG minus VTP such that we can do this tracking business. Okay. So what were we what did we want to do? We wanted to do this. So let me draw this circuit completely. How do I generate this one? So what I will do is I will create a bias.
nothing else but uh, you know two devices okay and i will make sure that let's no name this node b okay let's know this node x so by design i can make sure that um, if i if i have certain ratio of i z and i 2 okay what is this uh, potential x decided by is decided by this current i z and the w by l of this device right also what is the potential at node b decided by it is decided by i 2 and m 6 w by l right so if i manage these guys properly i made the scaled you know copies properly they, they don't have to carry the same current you can have a scaled version but then i can make x and b track each other very easily right by just doing uh, uh, proper w by l and ratio of the currents now what's left part is this part okay so we tracked x and b so they are out of the equation now we want to just make sure that the the vsg of this uh, this transistor which is let's call it my and this is mx okay mx tracks m6 vgs of mx tracks uh, so by design VSG of X, okay, and then we also want to make sure that uh, VSG of X, oh, no, sorry. that's done. And what did we say the RG value was? One over GM six, one plus CL or CC, okay. That's what we wanted, RG value. And also that RZ value, you you use this one, so you can plug that in here. One over mu p c ox w by l z v s g minus v t p of z device. Is this part clear? I mean, I'm just equating the two sides. Basically, this is our goal, and this is the uh, this is the value RZ that I'm going to get using this using this circuit on the right side is the rz because of this transistor okay and that is given by this and the vsg minus vtp of 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 this z transistor and on the left side is a desired value which is 1 over gm6 gm6 being um, uh, this transistor right and uh, the ratio of the capacitors plus 1 cl over cc plus 1 so this is what all you have to do uh, to make sure that uh, you get tracking. So let us uh, fulfill, uh, we will put in all the all the information. So we will get 1 plus uh, CL over CC divided by mu P C ox W by L of 6. This GM6 I am substituting and then it will be VSG minus VTP of 6. Okay, that is my left hand side. You get that? I am just substituting the GM6 formula and that is equal to 1 over mu p c ox w by l z vsg minus vtp of the z device. So far you are with me? Okay. So as soon as we do that we start cancelling things so these went away right. And now we have a really simple equation that looks like this. Also we know that this part VSG minus VTP uh, of Z device which is uh, this zero causing device we are going to hook it up over here. I2 which is the output current divided by W by L of the 6 device and uh, mu P C ox. You get how I got this, right? It is a saturated device. So it is K, VGS minus VT square. So we, you know, I divided by K and square root of that. That is what we got, okay? And then the this, this particular thing will look uh, similar except it is flipped. So here you are going to get uh, W by L of Y multiplied by mu P C ox divided by 2 times I Z. IZ is the current that is flowing through this zero generating uh, leg, 
biasing leg on on this side. Okay, this one. Alright, and then multiply that by CC over CL plus CC. Okay, now the fun part starts. You start cancelling things. These go away, and then um, these will go away, and then you'll get a square root there. Let's see. So this should look like. What does that look like? So this should look like uh, square root of yeah i2 divided by iz okay from here and here 2 goes away and then you also have square root of w by l 6 this one takes half of it away and then you also have w by l of y which is this one okay multiplied by cc divided by So what is the neat thing about this equation here? What is the beauty of this equation? Is there any process parameter that you see here? It is all ratios. Everything is based on ratios and typically ratios are based on the physical uh, design values like current I2 and IZ, they will be based on ratios of uh, devices, right? Okay. And then W by L6 and W by LY, they are also actual values. And, um, and CC and CL, they are also uh, physical properties and they do not vary. Uh, once you design it, they will not vary. They will be all based on uh, scaling because if you have scaling of 1 is to 10, right, that will not change over PVT. Each individual thing will change. W will slightly, whatever, all those, not W, but uh, the current will change this, but ratios will not change. So uh, that is the part of, uh, you know, uh, beauty of integrated circuits is we depend a lot on ratios of everything, okay? Because the absolute values are not uh, not perfect, but ratios are perfect, near perfect, okay? Yeah, I buy transistor. Yeah, I I think I I get your point. I should not have used the word Z. Uh, I get attached to my last name. Uh, so I use Z quite a lot. I should use maybe Y over here. Should I do that? Is it confusing? But then I have to change it a lot of places. Maybe you guys can replace it. Search and replace in your notes. Replace Z with Y. Uh, you get his question, right? Uh, IZ is not the current through M, uh, MZ. MZ does not carry any current, okay? Okay, so the overall circuit. So let me give you a reference if you want to look up. Uh, it is Bill Black. I'll start and then read, and it's a Journal of Solid State Circuits, uh, December '83 issue. So this is very widely referenced uh, circuit that they came up with. They patented it, and uh, it made uh, the design of uh, the line amplifiers for the, for the phones, um, you know, very very robust. It didn't matter anymore. It was always compensated whatever you design in the in a simulation environment, right? Um, so you could always, um, you know, you would a priori know what is CC and CL uh, because of things that they were driving, right? And then you could fix this thing so that they, they cancel out, you get great phase margin and then you save a lot of power. So, okay. So the overall circuit looks like this now just so that we do not lose track of how the big picture looks like. So you have this. first stage and then from here we go to second stage CL and this is our CC. And then on this side we have these two. Such a simple circuit, right? And it tracks with process, temperature, uh, voltage, everything. And um, 
and you get um, non-dominant pole replaced by the, the LHP 0. And this is your Z and I 2. This is I 2. Okay. So, this is all about compensation that I want to talk to you folks. Uh, there are very other, uh, many other different methods, uh, but I think once you have this understanding, you can take it further, you can read the papers easily. Okay. Now, we will move on to um, different, different architectures of op amp. So, the question was uh, before we did this one, the, there was a previous solution, right, where we we removed the um, we removed the zero. Okay, let me go back to before this one. You're talking about this one, right? How does this work? That's what. Correct. Okay. So, um, if you when we were writing the equations, right? All we were using was VO, and then we were using that VO across this capacitor when we are doing all KCL, KVL if you remember previously, right. So, here what I am doing is uh, the only reason we got the 0 was because there was a feed forward path across this inverting stage, okay. So, then we said that that is the reason it hurts, so let us not do that. Henny Youngman principle, right. If it hurts, do not do that and move on. So, uh, this, this one is uh, hurting, so we said let us not do that, but let us keep the original functionality same. So, how do you keep the original functionality same? I want to replicate this voltage V0 over here, that AC voltage. So, so I can just add a source follower over there and that way I can, I can drive this other end of the capacitor with this V0, okay, that is what we do. Yeah, now you do not have a feed forward path, right? We do not have a feed forward path like what we had before. Correct. Before we had a feed forward path directly going from uh, from uh, gate to our uh, drain, and I removed that one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But those are all di divided ratios and all that stuff. No, the no, no. So no, we cannot uh, quickly analyze those pieces just by talking. You can do the equation, but what I am trying to tell you is that this impedance, the easiest way to digest it is this impedance is a low impedance node, is driven by this output node, okay. So that is the one you need to remember and um, you know you can, uh, you can certainly solve the equation and you will get the same result. But I am giving you the insight, the insight part is that this particular node, your questions are natural, but the insight I am giving you is that this particular node around the other side of the capacitor is driven by this source follower which has a low impedance load which is GM6 right over here, GM of this source follower, okay, all right. And you can also solve this equation and you will satisfy yourself uh, with the same, uh, same analysis, all right. So let us move on to the op-amp architect. Any other questions on compensation? Okay, so let us talk about op-amp architectures, right. So there are tons of different ways you can design an op-amp. So I am going to go through um, at a high level how it looks like and then why we are doing certain things, insights and I want you to hold on to the insights because those insights, you can put them all together and come up with a new topology in your project, okay. So that is the, that is the key point. Okay. So the first one is, um, I want to show you is telescopic cascode op -amp. So, the circuit looks like this.
I am not going to lay, uh, label each transistor because it just takes a lot of time because uh, um, I can I can color them probably if you want and then so the the cascode uh, of amp right so these are all VB, VB1, VB2 these are bias voltages. So by name itself uh, you can tell that this is your V out okay and then um, if you remember we learned cascode mirrors if you remember right. So one brute force way of doing cascode would be this it is a flip. Now uh, if you do that it will work but what is the bad thing? Hmm? Swing good. So because this is uh, uh, this voltage is 1 VGS this will be also forced to be a VGS if you remember right and then you will have this voltage cannot this node cannot go up high okay. So then I taught you that other trick which is uh, high swing cascode. So there you can uh, do this and then we can have going up you will have 2 VD sats from VDD right and going down what will you have? What is the swing at the output? Hmm? So um, going up you will have uh, uh, VDD minus uh, 2 VD sat of the PMOS and going down you will have uh, 2 VD sat of NMOS assuming all these are positive numbers and also you have voltage across I bias okay. So as you can see I am keeping subtracting from the VDD all these things right and they will all add up eventually. So the disadvantage of this circuit is you do not have much of a swing you get that right because and obviously because I am stacking things right I am stacking 5 devices in uh, on top of each other. So wherever you see a stack you know um, it is not a low voltage circuit you cannot have VDD 1 volt or something like that because you will not have much of a swing okay. Um, so uh, limited output swing uh, but what is the benefit why would you do this? R output is high you get GM R out square type of numbers yeah. Um, what is why I mean why is this better than in what way it would be better? Huh? Uh, gain to two stage op amp may be hai na hai. They are all GM R out square type of numbers right. Here also you have a high output impedance is GM R out square divided by 2 right and then multiply by GM. So GM R out bracket square divided by 2 is what your gain will be which is the gain which was there in other cases. So what is so unique about this op amp? Why would you use this? Huh? Huh? Channel length effects but that is there in other cases too right. So it is not specific to this one. Something obvious you guys are missing. Eh. We do everything symmetric, yes. No frequency, yes, but uh, yeah, agreed. I mean, there is just one capacitor, yeah, agreed, agreed. But there is something more fundamental than that. I mean, it's staying right in front of your eyes, and you guys are missing it. How many current sources we have? Huh? Just one, right? So with one current source, a stack ke upar stack lagate gaya na. So you are reusing the current, even for higher gain, right? In the other case, we had intern inside current source. And there is another current source at the output. So you have power. You are dissipating power. Is me everything is on stack, but then you need larger supply voltage because I am putting everything in a vertical stack, right? So that's the um, I mean that's the way to analyze circuits at a very fundamental level. When you look at it, you should immediately be able to tell. Uh, what is going on? Correct, correct. Well, those are you know trivial current sources because bias currents are generally very scaled copies of the main current source. So they can be you know 10 percent less than 10 percent and all those things. So and those you can um, I mean right now I am showing it to you like this but you will never use separate biases. You will do some kind of twisted biasing each other. If you remember those resistor add resistor and bias and you will do all those kind of things. 
but that is not the deciding feature ok. All right, so you got the point right. The high swing cascode is the same current mirror we did long time ago. Remember? I am not biasing the ok. Um, no, no, your question I am biasing this V bias right. Okay, 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 okay. Let us go through that again. I mean, uh, if you have not followed that, then let me just show it to you, right. Let us remove this thing, right. As I said, the first what we would do is you would do cascode like this. It is a simple current mirror, right. But in this problem, kya hai? you have one VGS and then you go back here, right. So then it is, uh, uh, so this is two VGS, right. And then from here you go down one VGS. So it, this node is fixed to one VGS. And we want it to be VD sat, and that's the problem with this circuit. So then, what we did was we did a high swing cascode, which looks like this, which we learned I think uh, a long time ago. So this looks like a diode, okay? But then I can bias this V bias such that I can keep VD sat here, and then so there will be VD sat here, okay? And then you'll have VGS over here. So if I do that, then it still works as a current mirror. The gate is actually biased. Yeah, yeah, this way gate is biased. When I put VB, it is biased always, okay. Maybe that was not clear, okay. So this is, um, so there is, uh, what are the things we said? Uh, it is a single stage. So gain wise it is okay. So it is low power, current reuse. That is the key concept. Okay, so there is one issue that we have with this particular structure. Okay, um, if you want to make circuit like this, you are in trouble with this one. A follower, right? Because if I have to make a follower, what will I do? I will connect this over here. Okay. Now what happens? Now what will? <coughs> now what will happen? You will have. Uh, if you let us let us look at only this portion of the circuit. So, um, if you start from this node VB, hmm, that is your VB and then uh, you have uh, this potential right here which is uh, VB minus uh, you go down by VGS3, VGS of this device. VGS of this device, actually I should label these otherwise it will be not clear. So this is uh, M3 and M1, let us say for and one. So this is VGS3 and then, um, then you go up this way, okay. VB, VGS3 minus um, VTH1. Hang on, I just lost my bearing. So let me get my bearing back, okay. And then uh, VB minus, uh, okay, let me explicitly draw it so that I do not get confused. I am just redrawing this circuit. This is M1, this is M3. And then what we are saying is that we want to at least have D set 3 here and then uh, here you want to have V D set 1, okay. And in that case this would be 1 V G S 1 and this would be V G S 3. So if that is the case then you will have V T across these guys, do you get that? Um, v G S minus V D set, right, that will be V T plus minus VT and this will be plus minus VT this way, okay. So um, um, I am not explaining it really well but because you have you have connected it uh, like this, right, uh, you do not have much room to maneuver. The output voltage cannot be anything, okay, because you have to fulfill all the conditions and keep these devices in saturation. 
and I think you can draw that and it shows that uh, you are you're stuck uh, from uh, this is your VTH3 okay. So, VB minus uh, VTH3 would be uh, this level that is the um, that is the lowest I can go okay voltage and the highest I can go is VB uh, minus uh, VGS uh, 3 um, and then here this way VT, VT, VTH1. Did that make sense? No? Okay. Let me let me just draw the the different color. Maybe that would be easier to do. Highlighter, yellow. Okay. All right. So um, the lowest voltage this node can go to, okay, is VB minus VTH3. Right? VTH is a large number, right? VDSAT is a small number. Okay. And the highest voltage this uh, this node can this node can go is VB minus uh, minus this minus this. Okay, so this is the only range you get at the output to keep all these guys in saturation. So biasing becomes very difficult in a nutshell. And this is something that you probably should just draw it yourself and convince yourself. But I think I gave you the hint away. Okay, and what is the gain of this uh, this circuit? gain of this op amp of the telescopic cascode it will be um, the the driving point gm will be gmn okay current mirror and then you will have um, uh, gmn ron square in parallel with gmp rop square okay and you also have uh, to worry about this mirror pole, right? This mirror pole will have two CGSs and the GM of this device, okay? All right. So, this is about this is a discussion about the telescopic op amp, okay? Now, let us. Uh, Now let us uh, do the other op amp. There is a simple op amp that uh, using current mirrors. Okay, I mean this is as simple as it can get, but it has uh, um, it has good properties. So let's let's study that. And I'm using the word op amp and OTA exchangeably, right? So you, I think you know the difference. So we have a diff pair, and then we we push it through a current mirror. All right, and then you uh, push it through another current mirror on the bottom, and as simple as it gets. This is V out. Is this positive input or negative input? For what? Hmm. Yeah, I have a current source on the bottom, IT. Oh, yeah, na mirror hai na current mirror hai na. Okay, hang on, hang on. Let me explain. Let me explain. So this is um, this is our diff pair. Okay, and output of the diff pair, whenever you apply um, uh, voltage here, you will have currents, right, flowing through that. This is current swing currents. So, they, those will be flowing through this and I am going to mirror them over here and this one I am going to mirror through this current mirror and that is the that is what will go out right. So, which is positive input and which is negative input is positive left or right half the people are saying what 
So, this is something you guys have to huh? how many right, how many left and where are the rest <laughs> ok. Well, by majority I think let us see this is positive yeah ok and then this is negative. The reason again you know I am going to teach you this one more time. You start from here this node when you go across a um, um, inverting stage right we learned that common source uh, stage is the inverting stage. So, here see here you get negative and then again from here to here there is a another inversion. So, then that is why this is a positive input ok and here will be um, you start positive here let us say and then you go negative here, negative to here will be positive and that positive will go from here again negative. So, you know that that is a negative input ok, there is an extra inversion. But this, uh, this is a trick that you need to really absorb quickly all right. So, how does this work? I mean as simple as it gets you you create a differential current and you just mirror it to the output ok. What is the gain of this circuit? Hmm? What is the driving point uh, transconductance? Is a GM of this diff pair right all right. So, that will be your GM of diff pair. And then what is the output impedance at this node? You should tell by inspection right. Looking up what do you see? Huh. And looking down TDSN. So, you get about half the value right ok. So, I mean you get R out divided by 2 that is what you get that is the gain you get. So, you get low gain all right. So, gain is low um, and it is it is this is bad it is compensated with uh, output output cap ok. You can see there is a, there is no other uh, um, I mean all other poles are uh, at very high frequencies and the output pole will dominate which is given by uh, the output R out divided by C L R out C L ok. Um, the one thing that we uh, we touched up in the beginning, but we have not talked too much about it is the slew rate. What is the reason slew rate is important? Because you want to change something abruptly right as fast as possible you need as high slew rate as possible right. So, in this case let us say I take this positive input you know instantaneously one side or the other then one side will be shut off and then IT current will go to the output and it will discharge the capacitor right is that clear half of the trans half of the circuit will not will stop working because one transistor in the diff pair will be shut off completely ok. So, that is the way to figure out slew rate. So, the slew rate here is IT divided by CL ok and that is if all mirrors have unity gain. That means that the size of this device, this device are same, this, this is same. We went through this slew rate. Slew rate is uh, yeah ok let me walk through that again one more time. Let us imagine that this uh, I apply a strong positive input here ok. Then what will happen is that all the current will flow through this this side uh, and then that current will get mirrored over here and what will that current will do? It will it will charge this fastest and what is the rate of charging is going to be IT divided by CL that is all there is to it ok. Is everybody clear on that one? Yeah. Correct. What is that GM into GM? One, it's one, right? Then, anyway, don't think like that. Okay, um, I, I know what you're thinking, but um, think in terms of currents. Then it'll be clearer. Okay, think that um, if I apply a voltage here, right, um, you will get GMV, and you will get minus GMV. Is that part clear to you? 
uh, if I apply differential voltage. Now what does this current mirror do, top current mirror do? It will just mirror it um, to the output, right? And this will be going in the opposite direction, the one on the left side will be going up, GMV. So this will be going up and this will be going up, something like that. So there is basically GMV and GMV. Get it? So um, what you are doing is you are saying, oh, what is the gain from here to here and then what is the gain from here to here, okay? But when you do that, you will see that the GM of, um, uh, of this device and this device get cancelled, okay? In that equation itself, you will have GM diff pair multiplied by GM, uh, di divided by GM current mirror and then again you will have GM current mirror multiplied by the output impedance. So they get cancelled out. No, no, they are not same, they are not same. It does not have to be, they will get cancelled out. I mean, if you look at the ratios, right, you, you do transfer function from this point to this point to this point. You can do that too, but simpler way is to just use uh, current mirror uh, approximation, okay. So now uh, that I have told you this is the slew rate. Suppose I really want a fast uh, slewing op amp. Uh, what's the best way to do that? Can somebody tell? Let's say I want to increase this by factor of 10, slew rate. What would you do? Load is fixed. Ah, load is fixed. CL is fixed. Would you increase your uh, IT? That would be brute force. It can work. But uh, what's a simpler way of doing it? See, all you have to do is, huh? exactly. So what, if this is 1, then you make this 10. Huh? Then you will just mirror to the output branch, uh, 10x current. And same thing, if this is 1 unit, then this is 10 units. And these can be 10 to 10. They can be just single mirror, okay, for, for symmetry purposes. So that way I can, I can get a uh, scaling uh, of M here. If I do scaling of M over here. Okay, is that part clear? Okay, but the gain is low as we said and this one is compensated by using the output capacitor CL. So if your CL is not there, if you unload it, then it may get unstable because then now the other guys uh, creep in. So the way, the, re the way you compensate it, you have a large CL to drive and then none of these other GM, uh, uh, GM nodes matter anymore, GM or CGS nodes matter anymore, okay. So now, how do we improve the gain? What's the best way to improve the gain? Huh? I mean, this is the op amp, let's say, or this is the OTA. Then how would you improve the gain? Huh? What did you use? What word did you use? Can somebody correct him? Cascode. You remember that? Pentode, cascode. Okay, cascade is different. Cascade is used take one stage and you know you put, so this is different, okay, all right. Okay, so um, we use cast codes. So there what we will do is we will do this, uh, same thing. And then I can add a cast code over here. Okay. And we will do the same thing that we like to do always, this high swing cast code. And this is your VB1 and let's call this VB2. 
all right make sense so now what is the gain here guys you should tell me quickly now all these numbers should be on your fingertips you had a quiz right what is the driving uh, gm gm of the diff pair right so that's gm and what is the output um, hmm. okay so it's uh, gm ro square divided by 2 assuming all gms and all arounds are same okay i mean we are trying to gain insights over here this is getting a little bit annoying should i just turn it off i think it's uh, can you hear me no you can hear me okay can you find out that guy Deepak I think it is probably this it does not have good supply rejection yeah, let me explain ok let me see if that works better is it working better now okay all right i had to fudge with okay all right so uh, the question is why am i doing this over here only okay so here you really are simply um, um, where is the gain happening the gain is happening at the output right you have a gm and then you want high output impedance at the output right so then there is that's where i need a cascode okay so i have a cascode on the top and i have a cascode on the bottom on the bottom I need a current mirror, so I use a high swing current mirror cascode on the bottom. On the top it is it is different, the circuit is different ok, ok, alright. So, um, you got this right, the gm r out square divided by 2 that is again um, and then I mean in reality you will actually substitute the values for each each device, it is gm r out and all that all that stuff right. So, um, so um, again you know here also you have this. Uh, current mirror pole, this is also current mirror pole, current mirror pole and all those things right. So now um, I want to introduce a concept to you which is uh, very interesting which will uh, which you can use in many many places ok. So uh, if so, so pay attention to what I am telling you now because it is an important concept ok. So let us say you have a plus input and I have a minus input ok. So if I have a plus input then I have this gm v going here and if I have minus input then is gm v going here ok. Now ha, ha, the, the signal is traveling through this current mirror ok you get that right the current because it is a current mirror this is the gm v so this will be gm v ok and this gm v will flow here and it will flow over here ok gm v and then on the other side the signal is flowing this way so this will flow this way ok so this will be gm v ok. So, what is the job of this current mirror is is just to replicate that current from one location to another location right uh, and we can do it this way but unfortunately when you do this you have this particular gm node and you have two CGSs ok you are introducing these poles uh, in your frequency response. So, uh, you know why do you want to do that why cannot I take this gmv and directly shove it on this side ok. Do you get the concept what I am trying to say I am just saying that I do not have to do the current mirror like this but I can just say that let me remove this part let me remove this part ok and then I will um, I will simply connect this over here I will simply connect this over here ok you paid attention what I am trying to tell you and then I will just make this a constant current source. V3. Okay, so the top piece is now current constant current source, so this is not there anymore. Okay, but if I have a GMV flowing here, then that has to flow from this way because the top part is constant current source, small signal wise. 
huh? because we are just putting a V by. So that current source now has to flow, that current has to flow this way here and then it will flow in an opposite direction over here, okay. And this one is going in this direction will flow this way, do you see that? Because I have a current source, uh, the signal current cannot flow there, it has to flow down to the output. So that is a trick uh, that we are using and we are, we are removing a current mirror on the top on both sides. So obviously this is uh, better, right, if you do have one less node in a circuit, it is better, okay. Is this part clear? I just removed the, uh, the top current mirror and I replaced it with a, let us say some constant current source I2 and this will be I1. So functionally it behaves exactly same way, only thing that has changed is now the signs have reversed. This becomes the negative input and this becomes the positive input because I dropped one current mirror there, right. So if this is positive then this will also be positive, sorry, did I make a mistake? Plus, no, no, I made a mistake, sorry, so maybe what I had before was wrong. No, this is minus sign and this is plus sign, correct, yeah. So if this is negative, then this will become plus and this will become plus. From here to here, there is no inversion, right, because the current that is flowing and here you will have this extra inversion on the bottom. So when you do something like this, it is called folded cascode. Here. Because we are we are folding uh, the path of the current, right? Instead of the mirror. So this is an important concept. Um, you know, dwell over it a little bit so you get it. But I think I hope many of you got. So what I did was I just removed this uh, this current mirror um, right here, right? Using the cascode. And then I just dump this current straight away signal current into that current source top. That's what I did. I eliminated that particular device. So this is called folded cascode operator. So let me read rewrite this for you to show better. If if is this clear or should I take one step back and explain again? Huh? Okay, looks like you didn't get it. So then maybe let me do it one more time. So if you remember, this is what we had before. I'm only going to draw a piece. Okay, so we were doing this uh, VI, and that VI would go through this, and it would be GM VI, and that current would mirror over here and then it would go down towards the next circuit, right. So all I am saying is that now I am going to remove this piece and I am going to put a constant current source there, okay. So when I do that, it is going to look like this. I have a constant current source and then I have this circuit and I have this circuit. Get it? So this is constant I. So if I apply a uh, VI over here, you will get GM VI and that current has to, cannot go through the constant current source, so it has to be pulled from here. So that will be GM here, okay. So all that has happened by doing, by avoiding one current mirror is we dropped one inversion, that's all. So polarity change, that's all we did, okay, not a big deal. So this will be VB1, whatever that is, okay. So we avoid the mirror pole by doing this. So um, simpler and better frequency response. So now let us uh, analyze, folded cascode op amp by the way is very widely used uh, in most of the analog circuits and I will explain some of those benefits. 
so the folded cascode op amp uh, is uh, we draw drew it over here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to draw this stage first and i'm going to draw this stage and then i'm going to draw second third one here okay so remember the track so i'll draw these output branches output branches are basically four um, four transistors two p mosses and two n mosses okay so typically this is the way you draw uh, folded cascode i'm just showing you the development of the folded cascode how we got from uh, from that point to this point um, you may not find this anywhere um, you know um, you may just find the the direct structure of the folded cascode but if you learn it this way then you will get the insight into it so this is the commonly seen folded cascode op amp okay and then uh, then we have this and this and this and this they are all connected and then uh, this would be your uh, let's call this vb1 vb2 for now uh, for the sake of discussions let's not discuss how we generate those bias voltages for a minute okay vb2 vb3 okay and then what we would do is uh, we would this becomes our high swing cascode okay and then this is your output we have so this is the output branch the cascode branch this represents this and this these two okay and now i'm going to draw a diff pair which is on this side and then now we can say oh this goes to this node this one and this is our v out so this would be minus and this would be plus okay so advantage is no stacking we have cascodes for high gain but there is no stacking uh, on top of uh, diff pair or input devices okay and we have large output swing so swing is vdd minus 4 vd sat okay 2 vd sat on the top and 2 vd sat on the bottom you can design everything such that that way so this will be 2 vd sat and this will be 2 vd sat so if you have 150 millivolts or so then you have 300 millivolts 300 millivolts that would be 600 millivolts subtract that from 2.5 volts so you have pretty good swing at the output okay now um, i want to show you how do you calculate gain of this op amp because this looks a little bit not so trivial right so what do we do first thing is figure out the gm and to calculate the gm what do you do you ground this to a dc voltage source right and then you measure the current uh, if you remember short circuit transconductance and then you will find out that it will uh, it will be basically the gm of this diff pair okay so that's the gm of diff pair that will be gm1 i did not put any numbers here let me put the numbers m1 m2 m4 m6 m7 m8 m9 m10 okay so now let's figure out the output impedance so we know we know what is the gm now we just have to figure out the output impedance so what is output impedance looking up and looking down what is output impedance looking up mm, no not that trivial hang on let me draw this so i'm just going to draw that segment
okay and this is where we have introduced this another device right so this was our m2 and this was m8 m10 m6 m4 okay so and this is our v out so looking up what do we see and let's say what is looking down what is looking down are out looking down Our out looking down is uh, GM6 RO6 multiplied by RO4, okay. So we just look at the RO4 and we multiply it by GM R out of the cascode device. That is what we learned, right, okay. Now what is R out looking up? Hmm. RO8 GM8 multiplied by hmm? No, looking up. No, this is GMR out, right? It is a cascode. No, 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 no. This, this is, there is a R out here and there is a R out here, right? These are two drains. This is a PMOS. So, the two drains will have, so what is the impedance at this point will be R, uh, sorry, did I do something? Okay, RO10 uh, and RO2 in parallel. So, RO2 parallel with RO10, okay. So, that is the way to figure out the impedances. So, now um, R out becomes difficult to deal with because finally R out becomes R out down parallel with R out going up. So, what do you do? Huh? Use G's, okay. Um, that is the point I wanted to make here is use the G values. So, I wanted to do it this way so that you feel the pain, okay. So, let us do, um, okay. So, G out looking up will be equal to, what will be the G out looking up? It will be the addition of the two G's, okay, and it will get reduced, it will get divided down by the gain of this thing, okay. It is flip of the R. So, G out looking up will be GDS2 plus GDS10 divided by GM8 RO8. I am just using them inter interchangeably, I, I think you understand, right? Because I use GM R out so that I know it is a constant gain number. Hmm. And then uh, G out down will be equal to, so this is looking down will be equal to. Um, GDS, GDS4 divided by GM6 RO6, okay. So, what will be the effective G? Uh, I mean, gain will be GM, divided by G out. So, GM1 divided by what is the G out will be these two guys together, right. So, you will have GDS2 plus GDS10 divided by GM8, RO8 plus, because you add the Gs, right? GDS4 divided by GM6, RO6, okay? So, extreme simplification, let us make sure, let us assume that all GMs are same and all routes are same to get the inside part, as I like to call it. So, you have GM divided by, this will become 3 GDS and be divided by GM R out. Is that part clear? Okay. So, you get GM divided by 3 GDS, right. So, I can call it GM R out, correct. And then also I have this other GM R out. So, it looks like one third of GMR out square, all right. You get the point? Why one third? One third is because you get this, this thing hanging off here, right. That is why we, we lose part of the signal. The other way to look at it is that, um, you know, if you look down from this point, you will see this M4, 
uh, I think we went through this before in one of the examples. Um, as you go up, the impedance goes up and then again it gets divided down when you look at it from the source. So, I mean you can convince yourself that the impedance at this point will look like uh, G, GDS4. And so, there is a three way between these three impedances, okay. There is an impedance of M2, there is impedance of M10 and the impedance of M4, okay. So, only third of the current is going to the output in a nutshell and that is what you see in this expression. So, that is the way to calculate, uh, oh we already passed, okay. I want to make one point and then we can go, okay, since we have done so far. Um, so, the next point is slew rate. So, in this particular case, huh? which one? M10 and huh? do know, I mean, output impedance yaha hai na, I say, or yaha is ka hai. They are in parallel, right? Because this node is grounded, this top is grounded. We did that analysis, you remember half circuit analysis for diff pair, virtual ground. So, okay. So, the question is very simple. Question is, uh, how did I, uh, how did I put um, the output impedance of M2 and output impedance of M10 in parallel, okay. So, good question. So, one node is connected, you know that, right. That is this node which is connecting its common node. And the other node here on this side is connected to the ground, AC analysis ground, VDD. And the in this particular case, you have a uh, uh, virtual ground on the left hand side. So, that is why it is ground. So, that is why they are right on top of each other, okay. Very good question though. I mean, if you do not understand that, then you will have a difficulty visualizing it. I kind of assumed it. I, is that clear to everyone? Hmm? Left side, because of virtual ground, you connect the are out uh, to ground, okay. Let me wrap up quickly uh, by teaching you about slew rate because this is kind of important. So, in this particular case, okay. So, um, it is clear that the current on the top here, the current source on the top has to be higher than the IT, okay. Because part of the IT is being coming from top. Is that part clear? So, let me let me redraw this for you. So, uh, this this current is I 2 and uh, let us call it I T 2. And this is I T 1 let us say, okay. So, um, right in the when you are balanced, okay, everything is balanced then um, I T 2 is coming from the top because it is a current source and I T 1 divided by 2 will flow this way, correct and rest of it will flow down. Is that part clear? Okay. So, I T 1 will flow and then I T I T 1 divided by 2 will flow this way and I T 2 divided by uh, I T 2 minus I T 1 divided by 2 will flow this way. That is right in the middle. When, it, when things are right in the middle, right. So, now we are trying to figure out a slew rate. What do we do for slew rate? We just switch it the inputs one way or the other and see how much current is going to the output. So, then and then we say that oh how much current is going through this capacitor, right. So, then um, I can draw, draw a stick diagram to make it easy. So, the stick diagram is um, the two sides, right, uh, the two top legs, uh, they will be I T 2 and I T 2, right, if you remember. And the diff pair will take some current. So, let us say the left side takes the current and that will be I T 1 and the right side does not, right, because you switch the diff pair completely one way. Then how much current will flow here? I T 2 minus I T 1 and then that is mirrored on the side. Is that part clear? On the right side. So, then this current is I T 2 minus I T 1. So, what is the current that, uh, the, which way the current is flowing to the output? It will flow this way, right. 
because I T 2 minus I T 1 will flow through the capacitor. Is this part making sense this stick diagram that I am making? Huh? Uh, so I mean it is Kirchhoff's current law basically that is all I am just putting it in sticks. So you can see that even though this uh, top part is IT2, the final current delivered to the uh, to the capacitor is IT1, and you can do the flip analysis of this. In which case, uh, you know you don't have this current here, but you have only this current on this side. Okay, because the the current mirror is flipping other way around. Then what you will see is this will change. This will become IT2 this will become I T 2 because the mirror but then here you are taking out I T 1 on this side. So then we can say that um, since I am taking I T 1 out that is all I have I T 2 minus I T 1 from the top and then that means that I need the current needs to flow the other way around now. The current needs to flow I T 1 needs to flow this way. Okay. So the slew rate both ways positive and negative. for this op amp is decided by the diff pair uh, current source I T 1 divided by C L. Okay. And I already said that uh, this is a better has a better frequency response. Okay. One last thing. If you remember right uh, the common mode range if you remember even in the in the quiz right you did the PMOS common mode range and that was only from ground to mid supply something like that. So in this case it is going to be uh, from mid supply to uh, to the top or, or basically VDD minus uh, you know this potential here between these two VD sat plus uh, VGS. Huh? No, by design right by design we make sure that IT2 is greater than IT1. If you do not then it will clip right because the top guy will not be able to support that much current. So by design you want to make sure that IT2 is greater than IT1 otherwise this um, your slew rate will be become even less because when you do the flip uh, you want IT1 to flow from one side but the top device is not supporting that much okay good question. Um, now we are talking about uh, this common mode range portion right. So here you can uh, quickly see that uh, uh, you know I am using this NMOS diff pair right and I get um, common mode range which is uh, on a high side if I may right certain voltage above because if it goes below certain voltage the, bar, the, 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 the input diff pair and the current source will shut off. Right. So I can rip, I can do one more div, uh, one more diff pair here, which is a PMOS. It's not a great picture, but uh, maybe I will explain it. And then I can inject it here between these two. Okay. So. something like this. It does not look pretty but I have a maybe better picture that I can send you through the notes. Um, so uh, the inputs are same for both PMOS and NMOS diff pairs. Okay. So um, overall effect is you have a amplifier which has common mode range from 0 to VDD, rail to rail common mode range. Is that clear? Because uh, so in the beginning when the input voltage common mode range is 0 then uh, NMOS part will be diff pair will be turned off okay and as you start going up in the middle both the current uh, both the diff pairs will be on. So your GM will go up you will have effective of GM effective GM of PMOS and NMOS so the two GMs will add up and then when you go up on the top then PMOS will shut off and only uh, you will have NMOS part on. Okay. So the GM will look like this basically when you go from VDD uh, sorry 0 to VDD. So here you will have NMOS, uh, PMOS 
and here you will have n mos and in between you will have twice the GA okay. So using this you can have a rail to rail common mode range of amp and which you need many times because you want to do uh, some kind of instrumentation op amp or something like that where you want to do this simply like you want to follow or you want this to go from 0 to VDD and then you want this to follow if I do that and if you do not have rail to rail then it will only follow for half the half the because the op amp will be turned off right large signal behavior of the op amp all right. A couple of other things I wanted to show but maybe we can skip those. So next week we will do uh, noise, we will start talking about noise and we will we'll cover up uh, not next week, next uh, next class, okay. Thank you everyone. <laughs>